Equations related to the Bohr model for one electron, atoms, or ions. Okay, so let's just discuss a little bit of background for the Bohr model of the atom. Now, we talked about emission spectra and the fact that all of those lines that are observed in the hydrogen emission spectrum, for instance, are actually the differences in energy between two energy states. Now, Bohr developed his model originally to explain the spectral lines that were predicted by the empirically developed Rydberg formula, which actually does calculate them perfectly. They just couldn't be explained using that formula. And so here's the equation. Here's the equation for predicting the energy of an electron in some energy state. Now, Bohr's model can be made a little more general and can be applied to any one electron atom or ion. So, for instance, the only one electron atom is, of course, hydrogen. But if we remove an electron from helium, then we have one electron so in helium plus. Remove two electrons from lithium, and we have lithium two plus and so on. So three electrons from beryllium, four electrons from boron. And so the Bohr model does a good job of predicting the lines for any of these ions in addition to hydrogen. Now it's really important to note that Bohr's model cannot be applied to any multi-electron atoms or ions. Now as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the energy for an electron in a given energy level or orbit is calculated using this formula. So what this is, uh, here's the energy of the N. So that's just a subscript N to tell us which ener energy level. And here's a constant. So negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. And basically, this negative sign comes from the fact that the electron and the proton are electrostatically attracted to each other, and they are of opposite sign. Now, Z is the atomic number of whatever we're working with, so it would be 1 for hydrogen, and then it would be, you know, so for helium it would be 2, for lithium 3, and so on. And then, of course, whichever N level you are trying to calculate the energy for, that is the N that you would plug in here. So, this again, this is just a label, just a subscript. Okay, so we can also calculate the energy difference between these two states. So, so we basically have a modified Bohr equation, okay? So we have, here's the same constant, same z squared, and then we have 1 over the final state squared, the quantum number for the final state, minus 1 over the quantum number for the initial state squared. Now, be sure to square it. It's easy to forget to do that in these calculations. And so n is still just the principal quantum number for the state, and z is the atomic number of the atom or the ion. And so again, if we're dealing with hydrogen, then this would just be 1 squared, so it would reduce down to a simpler equation. Okay, so the central concept in all of this is that the difference in energy between two energy states, and so we've been calling that delta E atom in our conceptual discussion, that's exactly equal to the energy of the photon absorbed or emitted, except for the sign in the case of emission. So delta E atom is equal to E photon. Okay, and then just remember that we can calculate the energy of a photon if we have its wavelength or if we have its frequency. And so the sign of the change in energy of that atom or ion is positive for absorption, and so then delta E atom is just equal to E photon. So, the, so then delta E atom is equal to the energy of the photon directly. For emission, we have to take the absolute value because the atom goes down in energy, so that's negative delta E atom, and so we take the absolute value of that, and that is what is equal to the energy of the photon. Now we can also calculate the radius of any Bohr orbit, okay, and n here is still just the, princ the principal quantum number of the orbit you want to calculate the radius for. A sub naught is the Bohr radius, that's a special constant, and it's 52.9 picometers, 
and z is just the atomic number as before. Okay, so I will be posting, and I have posted some already, example Bohr model calculation videos, and so those are posted separately. So look for examples separate from this presentation. Here's another thing to think about. Now, Bohr's model of the atom concludes that electrons orbit around the nucleus at a fixed distance. And we'll see that this conclusion violates the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And it's also not possible for a charged particle to orbit around the nucleus without losing energy and so over time, it would lose enough energy where it would just collapse into the nucleus. Electrons don't exist in orbits of fixed distance around the nucleus. So Bohr's model was incorrect in that conclusion, that there are not fixed distances around the nucleus that electrons exist in and orbit the nucleus. However, they do occupy orbitals. And so we're going to be talking about orbitals very soon. So a slightly different word, but a very different meaning. Okay, so let's just summarize. So the change in the energy of the atom is directly related to the energy of the photon absorbed or emitted. And I can't stress this enough. This is extremely important. The difference in energy between the two energy states is the same as the energy of the photon absorbed or emitted. So keep that in mind as you're solving problems, because whenever you have the energy of the photon, you also have the energy of the transition. So we can calculate the energy for an electron in a given energy level, and we can use, do that using Bohr's model. Okay, So our constant with our negative sign times the atomic number squared multiplied by 1 over the principal quantum number, whichever energy state we're looking at, squared. And remember, the ground state is n equals 1, the first excited state is n equals 2, etc. The energy difference between two states can also be calculated using Bohr's model. So remember, the energy difference in the atom is the final state minus the initial state. So we can also express this change in energy of the atom using the Bohr equation where we have negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules multiplied by the atomic number squared, and then 1 over the final state squared minus 1 over the initial state squared. Now, also remember that the Bohr model only works for one electron atoms or ions. It cannot explain or predict the energies of multi-electron atoms or ions.